I was sitting in Algebra 2, which is proof that evil exists in the world. The mere fact that there is such a thing as Algebra and then Algebra 2. And it was test day. And Algebra and I, we don't really see eye to eye. We don't get along all that well. And it was just going to be like, oh, here's another disaster delivered to me. Thank you so much. And as soon as the teacher got done passing out all of the tests, I couldn't have planned it any better. Fire alert. (laughs) Please exit the building. Fire alert. Please exit the building. Proof that God exists. Fire alert. Please exit the building. The teacher slams her hand on the desk, rolls her eyes, and says, Come on, there is no fire. And we're like, we got to go. The fire alarm's (laughs) off. And the beautiful thing is they can't release everybody to come back into the building until everybody gets out of the building and is accounted for. It was a moment of pride to be the final person out of Green High School. (laughs) I walked slower that, that day than I've ever walked before in my entire life. I took each and every stair gingerly as though I had just twisted my ankle. And we took so much time exiting the building that we didn't have enough time to take the test when we got back into the class. It was fantastic. And the teacher was so annoyed. She was just so annoyed. She had nothing else for us to do because she had planned on us taking a taking a test for the whole time of the class. It was great, and she hated it because it was an interruption. It was something different than what she had planned for. It was different than what her schedule had called for. And I've noticed something about myself. The older I get, the more I dislike interruptions. The older I get, the more I dislike interruptions. It's just a natural part of of aging. It's a natural part of becoming set in your ways. I'm somebody who likes to have a plan. And as such, I don't really like interruptions. Now, kids, kids don't mind interruptions. In fact, kids love interruptions. And if you need any evidence of this, just have a child and try to carry on a conversation with somebody else, right? It doesn't matter. Dad, 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 what? Hi. What am I supposed to do with that? Because on one hand, I'm like, I'm a terrible parent because I just got annoyed at my son. And on the other hand, I'm like, I'm a terrible parent because that kid's annoying. And if he doesn't change, nobody's going to want to be his friend. He can't just interrupt everybody. I'm like, I'm just a terrible parent. It's just where I've arrived. I don't know what else to do with that. Love you, Dad. Love you too, buddy. It's great. <laughs> Lots of love. Lots. Of... But kids, they don't mind interruptions. But as we get older, we get more set in our ways. And, and nobody really likes interruptions all that much. By their nature, interruptions are unplanned. They're not designed. And they cause us to, they cause us to adjust what we had planned and what we had designed. And they can, they can cause anger, they can cause annoyance, they can cause uncertainty, they can cause all kinds of things. But this morning what we're going to see is we're going to see Jesus take an interruption and use it as an opportunity to convey to us the heart of God and to share with us all a message about heaven. And so this morning, we're just going to look at a few verses from the book of Mark. And if you have your phones or your tablets, you can follow along with us there on the Bible app. And if not, we've got it on the screens for you. You can follow along right there. But we're going to start in Mark 10, starting in verse 13, where we read this. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. So I want to set the scene for you. Jesus has just gotten done talking about a heart-wrenching topic. He's just gotten done addressing divorce and the toll that that can take on people and God's design and God's heartbeat for relationships. And so Jesus has just gotten done dealing with this heavy topic and the disciples are gathered around and there's a crowd gathered around because every time that Jesus spoke, people were intrigued. 
He was a fantastic communicator, and he spoke differently, the Gospels tell us, than everybody else. He spoke with passion, and he spoke with conviction, and he spoke with certainty. And he wasn't afraid to make his audiences upset. He wouldn't tell people just what they wanted to hear. He'd tell them what they needed to hear, and he was always honest and upfront with them. And so he's just gotten done earlier in Mark 10 talking about this heavy topic of divorce And then all these little kids are being brought to him. And the disciples, Jesus' closest followers and his closest friends in that group, they start acting like they're event security, right? You ever go to the concert and you're trying to make your way up to the stage just to get a little bit of the sweat dripping off John Bon Jovi to to magically, magically get you so that you can look half that good in leather pants, right? And so if you've ever if you've ever been there, or maybe maybe it's Lambeau Field and and you just want to get that much closer or or you want to be a part of the Lambeau Leap. And you see all the people in the yellow security shirts. And their job is to keep you at bay. Their job is to keep order in the crowd. And that's what the the role the disciples are kind of taking here. They see Jesus and all these kids are being brought to Jesus. and, and, And the disciples rebuked them. Like, stop! He's here to talk. Like, we want to hear from him. We don't, yeah, this is a heartwarming moment and all, but all right, we've, we've had our quote of Hallmark movies for the year, all right? So let's just let Jesus do what he came to do here, and let's keep your kids out. We're good. We're good. And there's this tension that exists, both within the disciples and, and the kids that are being brought to Jesus, and maybe even this tension that exists within some of us. And it's not a new tension. And it's not, it's not unique to followers of Jesus. It goes, it goes everywhere. But there's this tension, and a lot of times it's unspoken. But there's a tension between younger people and older people. There's just this natural tension. And if you've ever, if you've ever wondered about this, just listen to what people say about millennials. All right? Just listen to them. Everybody will tear them to shreds. And in case you're wondering, I'm too old to be a millennial, all right? I missed the cutoff by a couple years, so it's not like I'm just up here defending myself. I'm I'm way older than that, all right? But if you listen, if you listen to people, I am, look it up. 82, baby, not 85, all right? Missed the cutoff. Missed the cutoff. But if you listen to what people say about millennials, because they have a different they, they operate differently than what people are used to. And rather than take the time to understand that, rather than take the time to really understand how they operate and to see what drives them because it's different than what has driven previous generations, they just rip on them. Conversely, if you've ever talked to your grandparents or your parents, once they get to a certain age. It's easy to dismiss everything because you realize you didn't walk uphill to school both ways. That is, that's impossible. It doesn't work. Like, it took us a few years to catch on, but once we did, it doesn't work. It's impossible. But we can, di- we can diminish what they have to offer. So the tension goes both ways. It's not unique to one side or another. But there's this tension at play here between the disciples who are here for a purpose and kids who encounter Jesus who are there for a different purpose. And so at Lakeside, I just want to make sure that we're not those people. I just want to make sure that we celebrate millennials. I want to make sure that we celebrate older generations. I want to make sure that we're not those people who inherently looks like our generation is the best generation and we're the only ones who got it right. But instead that we celebrate people. We understand we can see things differently and different things can drive different people. But we're going to be a place at Lakeside that we just say, you know what? We're going to celebrate you. It doesn't matter how old you are. We are going to celebrate you. You are important to us. You matter to us because you matter to God. And it doesn't matter if the stereotype of your generation is that you want to arrive at work at 10 and leave at 2 and bring your kitten with you. That doesn't matter to us. We still love and value you, all right? 
And on the, on the flip side, if you got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and cooked yourself a hearty breakfast and then grabbed your lunch pail and walked 10 miles to school in snow September through June, and then you sat, into a, you sat in a schoolhouse that had no electricity and you alone were responsible for stoking the fire to make sure that all of the students had heat so that learning could happen in your environment. And then after a 13-hour day at school, you had to walk 12 miles home uphill, barefoot in the snow, to then go out in the fields and work an additional six hours before you slept for an hour and did it all again the next day. We love and value you. And you're important and you matter to God, so you matter to us. So we're just going to say, hey, we're just going to drop that. We're not going to rip on people. We just love you and we value you and we accept you because God does. So here's the deal. Last year, Ed Sheeran, he's, he's tremendously talented. He's a little fella, but he's tremendously talented, and, and he, he is great. I mean, just fantastic, uh, just incredibly, incredibly, just, just a wonderful musician. He had over 3.1 billion streams last year on Spotify alone. 3.1 billion streams on Spotify alone. He's 27 years old. You might know some of his songs, Perfect, Castle on the Hill, Shape of You, uh, the happier. Now, maybe if you're like into the Lawrence Welk hour, you don't understand any of that, and that's fine. We're glad that you're here. But otherwise, you, you might know. Otherwise, you might know some of these songs. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, if you listen, to, like still watching the reruns of Lawrence Welk every Saturday night, you're not going to be watch, listening to Ed Sheeran statistically. That's all I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with either of those things. So, but, but on Ed's album, entitled Divide, he has an opening song called Eraser. Check out this clip of a live version of the start of that song. So the most popular streaming artist of last year. And did you catch it? The first two lines of the album are this. I was born inside a small town. I lost that state of mind. Learned to sing inside the Lord's house. But stopped at the age of nine. And see, this is all too common. Every year. We see people, and statistically, it's a little older than that. But every year, we see people, we see students leaving the church. And I just wonder, selfishly, I just wonder, what if that was a different situation? And what if those talents, and you might be like, I don't know what you're talking about, talents, based on that video. But what if those talents... What if those talents were being used right now for the kingdom of God? But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant. And he said to them, let the children come to me. 
do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Let the children come to me. Now Jesus isn't saying you have to be a child to come and follow him. But instead we need to enter the kingdom of God like a child full of awe and wonder. Realizing we have nothing to give. But in spite of that, that God gives us everything. When we literally have nothing to offer God, God gives us everything full of awe, full of wonder. That is the mindset that we all must have in order to enter the kingdom of God. And sometimes you'll hear people say, well, children are important because they're our future. And that's true, but we're missing part of it, if that's our mindset. Because kids aren't just our future, but they're our present as well. Two-thirds of people who make the decision to follow Jesus Christ do so before the age of 13. 66% of Christ followers statistically do so before the age of 13. 21% did so from the ages of 13 to 21. 21% from 13 to 21, meaning the the 13% remaining make a decision to follow Jesus after they are 21 years old. And so I want to stand here today and I want to commit to you that we as Lakeside Community Church are reaffirming our commitment to children and students ministry, student ministries. We are reaffirming our commitment. I want you to hear this from me because we believe it. What happens down that hallway is just as important as what goes on in here. What happens down there is just as vitally important as what happens in here. And so two weeks ago, we launched our first initiative. And we said at Lakeside, environments matter. And I want to just stop here for a moment and just say thank you. Yesterday, we declared war on the weeds, and we won. (laughs) Right? We won. Now, some of you are a little worse for wear. Right, moving a little slower, a little sore today. And if you weren't able to be here, sorry that we missed you. But for those of you who were able to be here, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we're going to be posting some of that this week on on Facebook as well as Instagram. By the way, we now have an Instagram account. All right, so pull out your phones. Right, you're you're fine. Nobody's going to get mad at you. We're not going to yell. All right, pull out your phones. Open up Instagram, and right now, go to Lakeside Algoma and follow us. Follow us. Come on. I know you're on your phones anyways. You're texting people. So it's like the moment I tell you to be on your phone, you all put them away, right? Like, I get it. I'm not mad at you. That's fine, right? You can text people along. You follow the Bible app. It's great. And so, so yeah, just pull it out right now. Follow us along. We're going to continue setting up the profile, but we're on Instagram now at Lakeside Algoma. You can follow us on Facebook if you haven't already. We're available there at Lakeside Community Church. Sorry, that was already taken on Instagram. I tried. Uh, I tried all kinds of them, so we ended up with Lakeside Algoma. But So Facebook, Lakeside Community Church. Instagram, Lakeside Algoma. Follow us along. We're going to be bringing forward all kinds of content this week about the war on the weeds. Thank you. But also, we are going to be publishing the baptism videos as we are so excited in just a few minutes, we're going to be going down to the lake, and we're going, to, we're going to baptize eight people who've made the decision to follow Jesus and who are going public with that, Yeah, which is super exciting. And we are going to post their stories for you to watch and see the transformation, and we're going to, we're going to put some video footage of the baptism in that. So all those will be coming in the next few weeks on these platforms, so make sure you are following along with us there. But the next phase of Environments Matter is this. We are going to be redoing all of our children's programming spaces. We are going to redesign all of our children's programming spaces to better serve the kids and students who come into these doors. 
what we're going to be doing, and our desire is this. We don't want to just have great environments for the church. Our desire is to create the best, most engaging environment for kids in Algoma. That is our mission. To create the best, most engaging environment for kids anywhere in Algoma. We want our kids to talk about Lakeside Community Church like they would Chuck E. Cheese without the scary mouse that sings at people. <laughs> right? That's what we want. And we're, 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 not gonna have, we're not gonna have the pizza right away, but our goal is to provide an environment that kids are as excited to be at as they are when they go to Chuck E. Cheese. And to leverage that environment and their enthusiasm and share with them there is no greater joy than a life devoted to following Jesus. And so we are going to set out to create the best environment anywhere in Algoma for kids right here at Lakeside. That is our desire. That is our mission. And we're going to begin assembling the team to plan for that in the weeks to come. And he took them in his arms. Jesus did. And blessed them. Laying his hands on them. Children and students matter to us because children and students matter to God. And so we stand here today and we commit. We will do everything in our power. To point kids to Jesus. We will do everything in our power to support you as a family. To lift you up. To encourage you. To help you. That this would be a place that you come for encouragement. Not a place where you feel like, oh, everybody's judging me. Or everybody's got the better way. You get enough of that on social media and book club. You don't need that here. What you need is a place for you to come and you to be cheered on and you to be encouraged. And you're going to raise your kids differently than I'm going to raise my kids. And that's okay. But what we're going to say is, hey, we're just going to agree that we're going to point kids and students and everyone who comes in these doors to Jesus. And we're going to do it to the best of our ability. So long as I'm privileged to lead Lakeside, so long as I'm privileged to lead Lakeside, you have my commitment to do all we can to reach the next generation. That is a commitment I will make to you today, and that is a commitment that will be with you so long as I have the privilege to be here and to lead Lakeside. This will be a place that celebrates families. It will be a place that encourages people and a place that is intentional about reaching young families so that we can help them in their efforts to point their kids to Jesus or maybe even help the family understand their need that they have not yet understood for a relationship with Jesus. Now, maybe you're here today and you don't have kids. And you're like, well, well that, that all sounds nice. That all sounds great, but I don't really have kids. What? What does this matter? And so I just want to ask you a question. Have you encountered God like a child? Have you encountered God like a child? Have you taken the time to allow yourself to just look around and be filled once again with awe and wonder? To just take in the majesty of God's creation. To take in the magnitude of keeping this world together. And yet, knowing each of us personally. Of understanding that God created all this and in spite of that, we've rebelled against Him. And in spite of that rebellion, he still desires a relationship with us. 
Have you encountered God with the awe and wonder of a child? Have you realized, in spite of your best efforts, no matter how good you think you are, no matter how great the things that you can accomplish, when you offer it to God, it is nothing in light of what God has done for us. And that you can't buy that, you can't earn that, But it's a gift. And all you have to do is receive it. Have you encountered God like a child? Because in a couple minutes, we're heading down to the lake. And we're going to baptize eight people who have. And it's going to be cold for some of us. It's going to be real cold. It's all right. We'll survive. I can't tell you how excited I am to go freeze. This will be the happiest I've ever been to be shivering. Because eight people have discovered a God who loves them. And maybe they've encountered some places that approached them like event security, like the disciples. And when they tried to get close to Jesus, they said, you're not doing it right. You need to keep your distance. You don't look a certain way. You don't act a certain way. You don't have all this known yet. You just need to stay back a little bit. Keep, keep back a little bit. Keep away from Jesus. But God tore down those walls with the disciples when they were bringing the kids to him. And God tore down those walls for these eight. And God wants to tear down that wall for you. Maybe you've been burnt. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been told you don't fit in. You're not good enough. You don't measure up. Those people may even mean well. But they're wrong. And the message of Jesus to the disciples is the message to you today. Just let them through. Come to me. Let them through. Come to me. So I want to invite you, if you've never made the decision, to follow Jesus. To throw off all the obstacles. And just encounter Jesus. And for us collectively, say you matter, your kids matter, and we will be a place that welcomes people, regardless of their age, and we will make sure that everyone we have the opportunity to encounter, we point to Jesus. God, I pray that you would help us. Help us be a place that young families would flock to and find encouragement and support as we assist them in pointing their kids to you. God, help us look at ourselves and say, is there anything we're doing It's pushing people away. And if so, God, that we'll just change it. We'll remove it. We want to see lives change. We want to see people make the decision to follow you. And God, we are asking that you would let us play a part in that story. For your glory. That we would celebrate and embrace kids, that we would celebrate and embrace students, that we would stand and say, we are with you, we support you, help us as we want to help you. And God, I pray for those who are here today.
that they would rediscover the awe and wonder and see how great you are. In your son, Jesus' name we pray.